Hey, happy, happy Tuesday. I hope you are all well. Everybody is okay. Um, did you all have a good weekend? I hope so. Um, we did. We had a busy. We were at Landilo Quilters um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, some of you lovely ladies uh, and gents came to see us, which was lush. Uh, and then uh, we had the lovely Eileen. Uh, I was in the shop on Sunday because the lovely Eileen came in to use Daphne, which was fab. Uh, lovely to see her. Um, and then I worked all day yesterday, straight and ready for a chander. So yeah, it's been a busy, busy weekend. Back in the shop today, and then I'm off up to chander tomorrow. Um, so it's a bit of a, it's not strange, it's just different. So they're no longer doing the craft extra thing. Um, they've stopped doing that. But they've got this new app, which is not the Create and Craft app, it's something else. I will post some information about it um, tomorrow. Um, and you can go on at any time. You can watch live, but you can go on at any time. It's it's not one that you can do on your phone. It's got to be done either on a smart TV or through a laptop, I believe. I will work it all out for you. Um, but I'm doing like an interview thing at four o'clock on the new app. Uh, it's called In the Sewing Room and it's the presenter basically interviewing different guests. So I'm doing that at four o'clock tomorrow. And then I've got my shows then at 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. on the main Crate and Craft channel uh, the following day on the Thursday so so yeah it's all busy 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 and desperately trying to get ready for Festival of Quilts as well because that's going to be here before we know it so yeah um so yeah hi Carolyn flying visit because Ollie's urged it oh fair enough you go and feed that little man <laughs> um oh hang on I'm just trying to see your comments uh who's saying hello hi Anne hi Karen hi Leslie hi Kate hi Carol hi Lindy Lou hi Jean Angela hello my darlings hi Grace uh Hi, lots and lots of you coming on on. Fantastic. So, um, first, I've got one thing to show you first before we get going today. So, if we come over here, hopefully I'm over here now. Um, we've had all the beautiful, beautiful William Morris in. Um, it's absolutely stunning, the William Morris. Really, really beautiful. It's so popular with you guys as well. In fact, actually, let me just open this bundle up. There we go. Um, we've had um, this is one of each of the ones we've had in so it's called best best of Morris I think oh I'll have to remember I can't remember uh, hi Nikki hi Eileen um, but I just thought I'd show you we've done some little fat quarter bundles up as well if you you know you want a little fat quarter bundle of it um, it's all the like his really beautiful really traditional designs and I know a lot of you absolutely love the Willie Morris stuff I love that little ditzy the little fern you see that beautiful beautiful fern there um you've got that one which again it's all that you're know, really traditional really really lovely that one there it's not best of morris this one i can't remember what it's called i'll, I'll find it on the website and, and post a link and then that beautiful blue so we've got a little fat quarter bundle they are, are already on the website if anybody wants a little bit of william morris to play with okay they're already there now i've messed up me sarah's ribbon she cut this beautifully for me and then messed it all up <clears throat> so there we go wrap that one back up um we haven't done many of the fat quarter bundles but there are a few there if you want them there's eight fat quarters and i believe they are 25 30 pounds something like that i can't remember now really sorry i think i want to say 25 pound william morris i know it's beautiful isn't it guys really really lovely so fat quarter bundles on the website if you want them so what we're going to do today is we're going to do, so um, I've looked at this before and really liked it and I will, um, I've done a pattern for it. Um, so it's these double flying geese, okay, so double flying geese, which normally um, you have to, well, you have to do them foundation piecing basically because of how it's all offset. Um, but the ones that are out there are all very, very regimented. They're all the same size geese. And I didn't want the same size geese. I wanted a couple of little ducks in with my geese. Hence, Gus, go, um, is it Meadow Morris? Uh, Morris Meadow. That sounds right. About right. That's right, Nikki. Something like that. Morris Meadow or Meadow Morris. It's on our website, but it's definitely there. Um, so the the ones that are all on the are out on you know out in the ether out in the, on the internet have got quite big flying geese, and they're all the same size as I was saying. And I didn't want that. I wanted it to look a little bit more abstract, a little bit more irregular so i've rewritten the rewritten a pattern and not a pattern but i've redone the template to make this how i want it 
I think this would be beautiful as a block within itself. Just lots of these really, really scrappy. You could, um, your overhead is flickering oddly. Oh, is it doing that? Hang on, let me try this. And it was one of the leads was loose. Have I fro it's frozen now, hasn't it, the overhead? Okay, hang on, let me just, let me just, yeah, it's definitely frozen. So let me just re, I'm gonna deactivate it, guys, and then reactivate it. Okay, hopefully that should be fine. Sometimes the wire gets, gets trapped down underneath and it doesn't work very well. <laughs> so hopefully that's working now. Let me go back to here, there we go. We froze them. I hopefully I'm unfrozen now. Am I unfrozen now? Hopefully, hopefully we're back here and I'm unfrozen. Okay, now brilliant, fabulous. So um, I've rewritten uh, the template. I I messed around with the angles. I messed around with the sizes because I wanted it to be a little bit more abstract. I think if you're going to do something quite modern and, and cool like this, although saying that it would look beautiful in these traditional traditional ones, this would make a brilliant border. You could just keep making these to do a border around um, blocks. It would make a beautiful like um, sashing piece as well. So if you had like two blocks here and here and you were using the colours that were in your blocks, you know, if you say you wanted different sashing pieces, it would look really nice as that. It comes out at ten and a half by five and a half finished. So um, you know, if you add them to ten and a half inch blocks, it's it's right at that. Um, but also it'd be, like I said, I think it would make a really interesting border. And I wanted some little ones. I wanted it to be a regular. So I've put the template. I've already done a template. I've done a pattern. I've put it on our website. It's in the digital downloads. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of foundation piecing, which I know we've done quite a bit of recently. But I think that's because I'm having a bit of a foundation piecing love affair again. <laughs> um <coughs> so after doing that class, you see, and playing around with it, my brain's uh, my brain's gone to foundation piecing. So I'm going to do it in scraps. I'm using all these lovely scraps up from um, my Ruby Star bundle. Um, I've got all little bits and pieces here, and I'm going to do it in grey. Um, and hopefully, we'll get at least half one of these done, so you can see when they join together, they look really cool. You can also like reverse them as well, which looks nice. But we're going to start with some background, so I'm going to go with the grey. And as ever, we're going to, we need a piece that's big enough. We're going to start with number one here. I've put BG, I've written onto my stitch and tear so that, um, you know, I, for me, I find that easier. I actually write what colours I'm going to do on the stitch and tear. I also like stitch and tear, as we know, for foundation piecing. So I want a piece big enough for to cover number one. So... Can I use that bit there? Yes, I can. So, always go big with it, you know this. So I'm going to put the wrong side of the fabric to the wrong side of the stitch and tear and make sure that it's covered. So when I look through that piece there, I know it's all covered. Okay, I'm going to pop a pin in, hold that piece of fabric against it. All right, we're then going to fold along. So the next one I want to put in is number two. So this line here, between one and two is the line that I'm going to fold back. So I'm going to fold back against that line like that and we're going to trim off a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to use my add a quarter ruler. You know I love this. It's fabulous foam foundation piece in. Butt that up. Use that little lip there to butt up against the, uh, the folded edge and just trim off so I've got a quarter inch seam allowance. Can you see there? I've got now got a quarter inch there. Okay, I'm in the wrong place on it. should probably be here. Okay, unfold that foundation piece. And this is the bit that everybody gets stuck on, is this just beginning bit, okay? Now I'm going to decide what, what colour geese I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with a bright yellow one. So I'm going to cut off a piece of this scrap fabric. Go big. You'll use the, the little bits, you know, in other blocks. And then we're going to put this right sides together. So this is the right side of the background fabric. I'm going to put the right side of that against there okay sort of hold it in place flip it back over and then pin it all together okay like that we're now going to stitch from this point to this point okay now i know this is very repetitive because it's foundation piecing again and we've done we've done it a lot recently but 
sometimes it needs you guys just need to you know get it stuck in your head don't you it's one of those techniques that a lot of people do struggle with so i'm going to reduce my stitch length as well on here oh no not that one ah what did i do there we go that one so i'm going to reduce my stitch length down to about 1.8 that's what i like it on um if you're actually sewing onto paper reduce your sti stitch length down to like 1.5 it will perforate it more and it'll rip okay better so how have you all been did you have a good weekend what did you all get up to so i'm just gonna sew along that line now oh hang on i've got big chunky shoes on instead of uh bare feet oh what have i just done hang on a minute guys i just managed to <coughs> um right let's start again because i just managed to unthread my machine sorted my um, needle thread right I worked out how to use it oh did I I did work out how to use it come on there we go got it <laughs> so I haven't got to get my glasses every time <laughs> anybody done anything interesting any of you got any news to tell me there we go there we go right we're on it now <laughs> All the way down that drawn line, and then when we get to the end, just back stitch a weeny bit and then cut my threads. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna go back over here. Hang on, I'm just get myself organized because I'm not organized today. I'm not organized at all. I am very uh, headache. Oh, well, that was stupid. I look, I had a piece caught under there. That's joy of stitch and tear, it just tears out. I don't have to unpick that on there we go so I can take that pin out now and just iron back over this bit here like that okay there we go so uh, you was at, you were at a silver ring making class on Saturday and you and you made wet felted flowers at our craft class yesterday oh that sounds interesting can we see a picture of the ring my darling so what we've done now is I've done one and two and you can see that two is completely covered. Now I want to go to three. So this is this one here. So I'm going to fold back on the line of three. So I'm going to fold back there. Trim all this off. Like that. And then I get to decide what colour number three is going to be. So I'm going to go with, should I go with this peachy colour? Yeah, I'm going to go with some of this peachy colour. There we go. Pack a piece off like that. So I've got a piece like that. You can use much smaller scraps once you get used to it. Line that up against that cut edge, flip it over and pin it in. And now I'm going to stitch from there to there along the three line. Okay. <clears throat> You're going to post some pictures and giggle this. Oh, thank you, darling. I'd like to see. That'd be good. There we go. So needle down. There we go. And then stitch along this one these once you've got your head round foundation piece in it's really quite fast particularly like sort of simple blocks like this um, and it looks very accurate as well it looks like you spent lots of time doing it and there we go and then back over we go so there's going to be lots and lots of, I'm not going to do the whole thing because we'll be here for half an hour <laughs> but I just want to show you um, some of the bits I love how the fact you can get really really accurate neat points on the foundation piece in there we go so it doesn't look much like flying geese at the minute does it but it will do so my next one is number four and that's all the way over here so i'm gonna fold back on that line there like i said if you fancy giving this little one a go it is on our i put it popped it on our website as i did oh i've got hiccups i've got really bad hiccups today popped it on our website as a digital download okay so now I need quite a big piece of background fabric because it's got to cover the whole of number four. So I'm going to take a piece of the my grey, like that. And that is way more than I actually need, but in fact, actually, that's silly. Let's go in half. <laughs> Let's go half again. And what we're going to do is we're going to, that line that we've just chopped off, I'm going to pop that down like that now if you are worried that it's not going to cover just pin about a quarter of an inch basically on that line 
and flip it back against the pin. I mean, I know this is going to cover because it's really, it's a big piece. And then double check that number four is completely covered, which it is. Okay, so pop a pin in there, just away from the line, and then we're going to go over and we're now going to stitch from here to here. Okay, all the way down. And you're basically going to work your way up these. Okay, I think this would look really nice. You know, you could like rainbow them or like do them tonally. Um, you had a sewing day with Taryn on Saturday and you altered a dress for your daughter on Sunday. Oh, nice, nice bit of sewing all weekend for you then, my darling. Uh, what was that? You got me watching old episodes of Sewing Bee. I know, I, I really loved it. I loved going back and watching all the old ones. There was so many things I thought, oh, I forgot they did that. Uh, hi, Cheryl, how are you? You're 12 blocks into a 150 block FBP quilt. Oh, amazing. 150 blocks, that's a, that's a lot of blocks, but... I love FPP. What pattern are you doing, Cheryl? We go all the way down to there. One more. There we go. And then back stitch. That's it. What we'll do is we'll just put a few more pieces in because it is very sort of repetitive. This one. There we go. It is very repetitive, but I just wanted to show you how it comes together. Okay, so finger press that one out. Give it a quick press as well. There we go, like that. And can you see, you can see those really lovely sharp angles starting to appear. Right, so we've done number four, on to number five. So I'm going to flip back the line between four and five. Oh, come off. There we go. Like that. Trim it all off. Right the way across, like that. That piece I'll use for one of the other bits in a moment. And then I'm going to decide what to do number, number five as. So... Uh -oh, what colours else? Other oh, colours have I got here? <coughs> oh, let's go with a bit of navy. A little bit of navy, that would be cute. There we go. I'm trying not to think too much about the colours. I mean, you might have a you know a quilt that you want to do and use the block. This is a, like a sashing block or something. Uh, it's the Alison Glass tessellation quilt in autumnal colours. Oh, nice, lovely. Um, unfortunately, the fir first episode wasn't there. It looked like it was, but it was an episode from Series 6. Oh, there's a shame. There's a shame, lovely. So I'm going to add that one on like that. Pin it down out the way. And then we're going to stitch that one. They did that to me, though. They, they, I started watching them right from the beginning, and then suddenly they all disappeared. Um, and there was only, like, seasons seven eight and nine on there and i thought oh that's really annoying because i was really enjoying the watching the old ones and then suddenly they all appeared again on iplayer it was like they were gone for a week and then they suddenly all came back again and we go along that one there right to the end just back stitch a weeny bit and cut that one off i'll have to look at that um tessellation quilt cheryl that sounds lovely i love alison glass's work Right, pins out, and over we go again. And then we can just finger press that one out, quick press, and you just keep building them up like that. I mean, it's very, very easy to do once you get into the, like, the swing of it. So we've done number five, completely covered, so we want to do number six, which is a bit of background. So I'll do that like that trim off it's, very, it's not very interesting for you to watch now guys because it's very repetitive but we'll give it we'll give it a couple more just so you can see those geese starting to appear so now this because I've got an odd shaped piece of fabric I want to use and it's a triangle as well it's not just the case of putting it on and hoping it will fit you've got to kind of double check it when you get when you've got an odd piece because because they're angles that you're flipping at sometimes it's a real pain and it really doesn't work so if i put a pin there i just want to double check that that is actually going to fit and it might just yes it will just so we're okay with that bit there we go um enjoyed the latest final on saturday Oh, you watched uh, Wimbledon, indeed. You met your daughter and granddaughter in Carmarthen on Sunday, had a shop and a lovely Italian lunch. And then you saw three, the last three sets of the men's final. Lush. I was very glad that Djokovic didn't win because I don't like him. <laughs> Never have. Or we call him po postman, 
excuse my language, but we call him Postman Twat in this in this house because um, he looks like Postman Pat, but we don't like him. Um, <laughs> don't know why. I just never feel like he's a very good sportsman. Just never liked him. He's always more of a Federer and Nadal fan, and Phil's a massive Andy Murray fan. So, um, so yeah, I was very glad he didn't win. So. There we go. Now, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> Djokovic didn't win Wimbledon. There we go. <laughs> I'm sure you've all seen it on the news by now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that one's going to push out like that. And can you see these lovely little geese starting to appear? Okay, so you've got a little couple of... So I've d deliberately done it so they are different sizes. I wanted some little tiny ones with slightly bigger ones all the way up. Okay, I'm give that a press. Like that. And um, which one's next? If I put seven and eight in, then at least you can see that kind of bit. Otherwise, we will be here for, for hours. Let me just put the next couple of, next two in, and you'll, you'll really be able to see them appear then. So there you go. So seven is another geese. Let's grab a different colour. Um, what have I got going on here? What's that one? Let's use a bit of that colour. <coughs> Being completely random with my colours. I'm not sure any of it's actually going to go, but make a really interesting cushion top. If nothing else, you can make four of these and make a cushion front or a bag front easily. Yeah. So that one's going to go. So it's over here, number seven. Ooh, right sides together. Let's just give that a quick iron because it's a bit of a mess. There we go. It's quite nice because you can kind of audition your scraps if you've got little scraps with this. Uh, the block is clearly contemporary love it. Yeah, I really, I really liked this one. I've been looking at it for ages, but it was just a little bit too regimented for me, um, which is why I redrew it and and made it a little bit more abstract. So you don't like him either. So you were jumping up and down, so chuffy on cars. I know um, it's uh, he did an amazing job, didn't he? He's, he's a real talent. He's going to be a He's going to be one to watch over the next few years, isn't he, Kate? So, there we go. Across we go. I think this would be a really nice block if you were doing maybe like um, Sarah's Kindle cover that she did last week. You could make some of this. Um, uh, you managed to avoid the whole of Wimbledon, although Mum kept giving you updates. You'd think she'd know by now I'm not a fan of tennis. Oh, I love the tennis. It's one of the few few sports I really do like. Uh, Nikki, yeah, you're not a Novak fan either. No, good, good. I'm glad we're all on the same page, lovely. We don't like Djokovic in, the, in this uh, this uh, <laughs> this household. <laughs> there we go. Right, okay, I'm going to put that next one in, which is number six, and that's going to kind of make those two geese appear. And you can see I'm being so over generous. You can play around with this, guys, and you can use little tiny bits of scrap up you know i'm just being over generous because i can be because i'm doing it on you know, for you guys here we go adding that on like that nearly there and that it's it's too repetitive for me to keep going i'm just going to add this last one you'd think this uh, make this a great quilt for man yeah it really would wouldn't it lovely yeah i think um because it's not too floral i like the fact that you know there's no reason actually thinking about it am i just so in the right line yes i am seven eight yeah when you um if you didn't want to um if you didn't want to um what's the word make small blocks like this oh, oh hang on let me do this line and then we'll talk about it i've just thought of something that would work actually if you wanted to make long thin really long thin blocks you could it would work here we go just do this one here For Novak to Andy Murray. No! He's a bionic man, Mrs. I mean, how many of us would be able to still play tennis like, or do anything like that with an artificial hip? <laughs> I know he comes across quite sullen. He really does. But uh, my husband's followed him since he was like 15, 16. So massive, massive Andy Murray fans in this size. So can you see how these lovely little geese are starting to appear? Okay, and you would keep working your way up. Um, 
So that's number eight done. So we'd go to number nine there. Let's just chop that bit off like that. There we go. And then I'm just going to trim off the the excess here so you can see the bottom of the block, okay? Um, you can see how it's appearing because I just had a thought actually about if you didn't want to do lots of small blocks like this, you could just trim that off there. Okay, right. Let me just, can you see, there you go, you've got those lovely geese coming together and then you could join them like that and they'd make these really interesting borders. You know, you'd get these lovely, you know, long lines of really sort of contemporary, different, um, different sized sort of flying geese all offset. If you didn't want to have to make lots of blocks this size and then sew them together, you could, with the template, take long pieces of, stitch and tear so when you're a big big long piece draw the template out like that and then put the template underneath and have that line matching that line and draw it out again and draw it out again so you could do your borders in one long block you know rather and then you would just work from the bottom and work up it it will work because that piece will go up to there that would be your net yeah it should work I'm going to try that before any of you do that. I'm going to try it, but that should flip that one out. So that's my last one. Flip there. Yeah, it would. It should work. Because that would be on like that. So that would flip out. That would, yeah, that would work. That one, that one. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it would work. So, but if not, just make lots of, lots of little ones like this. And then you can join them together to make... I mean, like I said, four, actually six, one, two, yes, yeah, six would make a beautiful cushion front if you wanted something really contemporary or, you know, have that going up the front of a cushion with just some plain fabrics here and you're having a real sort of, you know, um, stripe of, of design. Really interesting bag fronts as well, you know, all sorts of things. Um, it was just a different way of doing it and I wanted something kind of, you know, quite modern and a little bit more abstract. So that's it for me today. Um, oh, let me come back over here. Hi. Um, Jean, you were tied up your ruler bag yesterday and you found your add a quarter ruler. How's that for timing? Brilliant. Love these things. Add a quarters. If you do an FPP, they're invaluable. Absolutely invaluable. Um, Carol, you prefer Andy, you're bi biased as you're Scottish. Absolutely. Oh, sorry. No, that was Jean answering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just... Jokovic in this house? No, doesn't happen, I'm afraid. Not not a fan, any of us. We all boo and hiss at the TV, like pantomime dames. <laughs> so, um, Sarah will be here tomorrow. So she's going to do one at one o'clock. Lindy Lou's going to cover the shop for her so that she can come and, because I'll be on my way up to Peterborough. She's going to be doing a Zimmer frame bag. Um, so she'll be here tomorrow to do that. And then um, I will be on Crate and Craft on Thursday at 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. And I will try and work out how um, we, you guys can watch the interview thing that I'm doing at 4, 4 p.m. It stays on the app so you can watch it like forever. I don't know if they, I don't know if it's filmed live or not. I really don't know. It's all very, very new. They just asked me to be there for four o'clock. So I will find out and let you guys know. Um, so yeah, that's it for me for this week on here. But uh, hopefully um, you'll join us on tomorrow, Sarah tomorrow, and then join us for Crate Craft on Thursday. Um, and then, yeah, so have a lush week, guys. And I'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.